This video is this part of a series of videos in which I'm trying to teach you the basics of cameras and photography. Uh, it's aimed at either beginners or people who just want to refresh themselves on the foundations of photography. Now, it's part of a series. At the end, I will link to the next video in the series, the playlist that'll take you through all the series. But this particular video is the first part of three videos on the exposure triangle. In this video, we're going to talk about shutter speed. Now, the shutter within a camera is basically a curtain, a bit of card, whatever you want to think of it as, that goes past the front of the, cam the lens, blocking, the letting the light in. So if you imagine the shutter's in place, the light's blocked from coming into your camera, it comes up and opens and lets the light in, and a second shutter comes up behind it and blocks the light. Now, the period of time that the, shut that the sensor or the film in your camera is exposed to the light, that is called the shutter speed. So that's how much gap is there. Now, the shutter speed in most cameras ranges from 30 seconds up to one eight thousandth of a second. Now, there will be variations depending on the camera, huge variations perhaps. Now, the you can actually put like most cameras in what's called bulb mode, where the shutter simply stays open when you pr opens when you press one button and closes when you press another. Now, what are the properties of shutter speed? Well, the longer the shutter speed, so the longer period of time, the more light will be let in to the sensor, which helps to adjust the brightness or the darkness of your exposure. But there are properties beyond that in shutter speed and why you might choose to have a high or a slow shutter speed within an image and then adjust the other elements of the exposure triangle in order to achieve the same level of exposure. Now, if you make your exposure for a long time, say for a 15, 16 second exposure, a couple of things are going to happen. You're going to get movement blur within the image on anything that's moving. Now, that can be very useful from an artistic point of view, but it can also be a problem from a non-artistic point of view. You may have seen landscape photos where the water looks completely smooth. The photographer has usually used a long shutter speed here. So what happens is because the water is constantly moving, you end up with a smooth surface because the image has averaged everything out. It's all blurred into one, which gives you a smooth image. The rest of the landscape is probably not moving at all. You'll usually find these images, people have avoided trees, for example, that may be blowing or not done them on particularly windy days. So that looks perfectly normal. Now, if you used a long shutter speed and you were photographing somebody playing football, for example, their rapid movement would result in so much blur, it would be difficult to discern the image. So if you wanted to freeze the action and make somebody look completely still, you need a high shutter speed. So by a high shutter speed, what we mean is a short amount of time that the shutter is opened. So for example, if you were shooting some people playing football, I would suggest you would probably be worth starting off with a shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second and then either increasing or decreasing the shutter speed until you get something that you're happy with. Equally, if you were photographing a guitar player and you wanted to keep his hands completely still, you would choose a high shutter speed. But if the rest of the guitar player's body is still and you wanted to get some movement or see the movement of his fingers, then you would try and find a middle ground. You would maybe go for a one, one, two, one, 125th of a second shutter speed and lower it down till you got to the point that you were happy that his face looked sharp enough and no movement but his hands were moving. So that's shutter speed basically. Controlling the shutter speed controls how much movement is in the image as well as of course how much light is being let on the sensor. If you need to use a short shutter speed, a very short period of time to freeze motion, then you will probably have to increase your ISO or increase the amount of light you're letting on your sensor with ISO or with aperture in order to compensate for how little light you're letting through with your shutter. Equally, if you need a long shutter speed because you want to smooth out water, you will likely have to reduce the amount of light that's getting onto your sensor but with either ISO or with aperture, which we'll cover in the next lessons. Again, 
the next lesson should be up here if it's not there yet subscribe to the channel so that you'll know when it is and there's a playlist up here of the lessons that we've already recorded